God's design for a healthy church. We talked about uh, elders and deacons and leadership and members. So Shannon's going to wrap that up uh, for us with his message. So give him a warm welcome. Let Shannon come. You guys may be seated. Thank you, Matt. I was going to say it's so good to see you, but I really can't see you. So <laughs> I guess I'm on. We thank the Lord for you all, and uh, we want to see God do great things. There's a passage of scripture God's put in my heart, and we want to give it to you that you may receive it and grow as God wants you to grow. Uh, I'd like for you, if you can, turn on your devices or either uh, if you have a copy of God's Word, the la Philippians, the last chapter. Paul wrote this to a church who were, uh, he loved them, and they loved him. Started off kind of rough. Uh, we don't know, you know, we never plan how God grows a church. <laughs> He's got some unique ways, and this, this time it was through the prison ministry, and uh, Paul was put in prison, but uh, the folks loved him. They carried on. He's written a letter to them, and now we find that Paul is just kind of summing up some things he wants this church to do to carry on. Six things we're going to see in this chapter make for a victorious church. And I'm sure you already got some of them, but I want us to just look through God's Word and take one by one, and I want you to see if you can remember them. All right, the number one thing he gives them is found in verse 2. I entreat Utica, and I treat Sinca to agree in the Lord. Hey, if we're going to grow, God needs a church who's agreeing in the Lord. These two women evidently were great helpers to Paul, and so he mentions them. But often when you have great workers, uh, they don't talk the same language. Uh, every day I walk my cat and dog. They have a different language. But we walk together. My dog's about a 50-pound boy. And as we walk, he is wiggling his tail, and I know he's happy, I'm happy. I pet his head, he wiggles his tail. Now, our cat walks with us. You want to know what he looks like when you see the halftime today for the Super Bowl? You're going to see his picture. I looked at it, and I, I talked to him this morning about it. I said, did you leave some family around somewhere? Uh, he is a flame, part Siamese cat. No, I don't have a leash with him. You don't control the cat. If he likes you, fine. If he doesn't, I'm going to put up with him. And as we walk, his tail is straight out. Now, if I see his tail moving, I know, don't touch it. He's ill about something. And sometimes I've just got kind of a bad nature. I will pet the dog a lot. The cat will just take his paw up and smack the dog in the face. He just, you know, and if I want to get the dog upset, I pet the cat more. They talk different languages. But they get along. They sleep together. They're partners. And we walk together. So it is in the church. There are some people that have a different language. I'm not talking Vietnamese and English. <laughs> uh, it, it, language doesn't make any difference. Some people, there's a book about love languages. And people have different love languages. Uh, they, they communicate different. And consequently, well, in the church, what we're going to have is it's always true. Some will not like get along with each other simply because they talk a different language. Got different views about things. And, and so he says, I want to encourage you. Those two ladies agree in the Lord. What can we agree in the Lord about? 
Anybody help me? What can, we, what can we agree in the Lord about? Nothing? Scripture. Somebody else? Jesus. <laughs> okay. And that's why he moves on. You'll find in verse 4, rejoice in I don't know if y'all are out there. I can't hear you and see you. Thank you. How do we get along? We fix our rejoice. How often do we rejoice in the Lord? It's in the text if you want to read it. Always. Can you all do that? Uh, yes, there's going to be some folks we just absolutely, we got different views about things, grew up different, got different attitudes. But if we rejoice in the Lord always, he, say, he repeats it again because he knows you didn't get it. Okay, number thing, one thing he wants us to do as a church, rejoice in the Lord. Say it. Number one. All right, good. All right, let's move on to number two. Verse 6, don't worry, but, what? Pray. Thank you. What do we pray about? It's in the verse. Everything. Does that mean you pray about your car? Yeah, I can't see you, so y'all go ahead and talk. Okay, does that mean you pray about your house? Does it mean you pray about the washing machine? Can God fix washing machines? <laughs> I can't think of anything God can't fix, can you? And I've seen it. You know, I, I prayed for the car. I've had God fix it. The king said, how did that happen? I don't know. God's in charge. He said, do not worry. How many of you all worry? Okay, hands went up all over, right? I can't see you, but I figured you'd, you're not lying. So we, he said, don't worry. Don't be anxious, but pray about everything. Number one, what's our first rule? Rejoice in the Lord. Number two, pray about everything. Let's hit with a positive. Okay? Got it? So I'm going to keep asking you until you get it. Number three, verse eight, he tells us what to think about. God's church. Now, we can think about each other, get mad with each other. No, nah, don't do it. Don't do it. Rejoice in the Lord. But we're worried about, uh -uh, don't worry, pray. Now he's going to tell us what to think about. That's right. We need guidance in what to pray about, think about. All right, he says in verse 8, he said, I want you to think about what's true. <laughs> Can anybody tell me what true is? Who is truth? Who's truth? Jesus. Can you give me a scripture that says something like that? I am the what? Oh, got it. All right. Think about what's true. That would not include our politicians, would it? It would not include our doctors. Our scientists. It would include only Jesus. Think about what's true, what's honorable, what's just, what's pure, what's lovely. Who's lovely? Who's lovely? Truth? 
Okay, who is that? Come on. Jesus, thank you. Uh, and whatever is worth commending, what's worthy of praise, think about that. All right. How do we think about Jesus all the time? I find a, a little book here called the Bible. It's very helpful. In fact, all the way from Genesis to Revelation is about Jesus. All, everything in the Old Testament points to Jesus. <laughs> everything in the New Testament declares him. and points back and says, yeah, I was telling you, that's what it's all about. The atonement, the blood atonement, I told you from the beginning. It's all to Jesus. So I found that starting my day with Jesus is important. Uh, I, I, a lot of us, uh, we, we get real excited every day, and it doesn't take much to get us off. Uh, and so what I found is I have a Bible beside my bed, and I read it before I get up. Otherwise, once I'm up, gone, I, I get distracted, I'm off on other, other things, and before you know it, oh, God got left out. So get in God's Word. I found you often have crazy dreams at night. You wake up thinking about something crazy, foolish. <laughs> okay, get back in the Word of God and think on the Word of God. Number one rule. Number one rule, what? Rejoice. Thank you. You have to say it loud enough so I can hear, okay? Number two, pray. Good. Number three, think about Jesus. All right, number four. Oh, wow. You know, they get worse as we go down. Paul is thanking them because they've helped him. Uh, this is the one church that kept giving to Paul, supporting him. He go to some churches like Colossae. They never helped. <laughs> you know, but Philippi did. And Paul was getting ready to talk to them about their giving. And he says, let me, let me just set it up first with you. I have learned to be content in whatever state I'm in. If we're not content, we're never going to be happy. Have you learned the lesson of being satisfied with what God gives you? Being content. Paul had learned that. He said, I've learned uh, sometime when you get a lot, you say, well, you know, I'm not content anymore here, and so I'm going to move to the mountains or the coast. I found such tragedies when people can't learn to be content. Got to have more. Now, if you're going to get married to somebody, and I notice a number of you look like you're single and looking for somebody, you find out if they're content. I don't know anything worse than to marry somebody that's never content. More and more and more. Oh, I pity you if you marry that person. You, you're, you're never going to satisfy them. You know, is a dozen roses enough? No. They want more, more. And you're going to drive yourself crazy. Learn to be content in what state you are in. Got to use it. We all experience times where we say, Lord, this is hard. But you know what? I've lived long enough to find out the worst times in my life God used the most. When you said, Lord, don't like it. This is really tough. And you'll find God to use it as a blessing in your life. Try it. And so our fourth thing is to be content. Got it? You know, if, if we're always, well, I'm going to, uh-uh, uh-uh, stop focusing on tomorrow. Today. Right now, today, I'm satisfied. Are you all satisfied? Nobody's satisfied? All right, number one, number one, 
Joyce, good. Number two. Good. Number three. Thank you. Great. All right, number four. All right. Wow. Okay. Number five. What a blessing. Number verse 13. Paul's learned. You say, well, you know, this seems like uh, God is asking the church to just be satisfied. We're not going to do anything different. No, 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 no. He put verse 13 in. I can do all things through Christ. It's not self-sufficient. It's Christ-sufficient. I know with God's help, we can do it. And yes, we dream of what else we can do with the Lord and for the Lord. With God's help, and just remember, one rule that's throughout the scripture is, God does not like a big crowd. He loves small numbers. Because he can do big things without big crowds. That's the way our Lord works. Many years ago, we had a Korean named Pastor Che. And I'm going to go over to his church in a few minutes. And he was here, came to me, he said, I want to grow a Korean church. I said, how are you going to do that? Early morning prayer. That's a novel way. I said, okay. So what does that mean? He said, I'm going to come to church every morning at 5 o'clock and pray great. You're not going to have to worry about it. most of us are not here at 5 in the morning. So you know what? Uh, I started coming early. We still like to do that. And, uh, I come in and see Chase kneeling right here praying by himself. About a while. Then after a while, somebody else come join him. Another one. Until they built a great church and still going today. Bought the Six Forks building over there. He, he met there here for a while and then uh, they wanted another place. We gave him the old building. They said, well, we want a, another place. So they bought Six Forks building and so they're worshiping there. God loves little things. You say, but we're just a small. Listen, God loves little things. Go through the Bible. I think Samson was a little guy. I really do. I think he's a little skinny guy. And that's what's so amazing. He wasn't a big guy. Woo! Look at that little guy. He wasn't a hunk. Gideon. God said, no, we don't want the crowd. Come on, I'd run. God always likes a small group who are committed to him. That's why it's unlimited what God's going to do through you all. So don't, don't look around and say, whoa, we're here. No, uh, uh. Right here. Right here with what God's given. Look what God's going to do. Okay? This one is I can do it through Christ. Say it. Good. All right. We've got to review again. Number one. Number two. Great. Three. Amen. Four. All right, good. Thank you. All right, now we get down to our last one. Verse 19. Paul says to this church, My God will meet all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Wow. How much does our Lord have? He has it all. He has the cattle on a thousand hills. He's totally unlimited. You, you'll never say, well, I guess God run out. No, no, God never runs out of anything. He's got plenty of love. He's got plenty of gold. He's got plenty of everything. He says this to a church, though, who have continually blessed him personally. Paul has moved from church to church because that's his ministry. 
this church just kept sending me, kept supporting him. Wherever he went, he went to churches where they wouldn't support him at all. But Paul felt called to there, and because of that, this one church said, you're our preacher, and we'll support you wherever you go. Wow. And God, through Paul, says, I'm going to tell you something, church. God will supply your every need. You are, not, you are tapped on to somebody who's going to take care of you. Isn't that good? What a blessed promise. Okay, we get down to 1 Timothy chapter 5. Paul writes to uh, the church there in verse 17. He says, the elders, y'all know who an elder is? Do you know who an elder is? What is that, somebody old? I was an elder when I was 19. How old are you, Nat? 27. That's an elder who directs the affairs of the church well, are worthy of double honor. Honor is pay, especially those who work in the preaching and teaching. For the scripture says, do not muzzle an ox while he's treading out the grain and the worker deserves his wages. Uh, the ox was used on a round grinding wheel and he would go around and around and this would be a stone uh, like our water wheels that we used to have in this country and you'd have the grain go in and that cow would grind out the grain gradually and, and when you see these things the grain would pop out of there and snap out over where the cow was walking and he says listen do not muzzle him and keep him from eating he's working around all that good food let him eat he deserves it and he's saying to those who lead you in the church do pay them double honor what is double honor Okay, you figure out what a person's worth. And you figure, okay, uh, he's preaching the word to us every week, and so, you know, we probably ought to pay him, well, let's pay him, you know, he's 27. Uh, let's pay him 25000 All right, the Bible says you pay them Double honor. So if you figure 25, so what is, what's double 25? 50. That's right. Whatever you figure ought to be. Why is this important? Is this in the Bible? Is this in the Bible? It's in there, isn't it? Y'all are not listening. Why am I preaching this? Because some years ago, we were a small congregation. And we were trying to figure how on earth we could build these buildings. And we were struggling. And therefore, in the struggle, they said, well, you know, we can't afford to pay the preacher. Because if we, can, if, you know, if we pay him, we can't build these buildings that we want to build. And we had a dear brother came and preached this very passage. I'll never forget. And our leadership heard it. And they realized that God's word's still true. And if we disobey God's word and think God's going to bless us, he won't. So I'll never forget we met, the deacons met, and the elders. They said, you know what? We got to do what God said. If we want God's blessing on this church, and we're struggling, we didn't have much money. <laughs> and you know what? I've seen what happened. And I saw a church decide, you know what? We don't know how we can afford it. But we're going to pay this man 
double honor. And we're going to see what God will do. What does God say that he will do? Do you remember it? My God shall supply your every need. You're giving, God's going to bless you. We watch what God's done. This is his work. And it happened when the church decided, you know what? Let's do it. Don't know how we're going to do it, but we're going to count on God to do it. Now, he is writing this to people who give. We had young children. My wife didn't work because we felt it's important she stayed with the children. There wasn't much coming in. But you know what? We gave to God all along the way. I've learned a lesson. You cheat God, <laughs> he's going to take it out on your hand. He's got a lot of unique ways of blessing us. We had washing machines and dryers that they wouldn't die. They said, well, they don't last that long. Well, ours just ugly the way. They just kept going and kept going, and, you know, finally we just gave them away. After 20-some years, thought, you know, we're tired of this thing. God does that when you personally decide, I don't know how we can do it. But I know God is going to get his share. So what's his share? Well, in the Old Testament, it was 10%. And that's a good place to start. You heard what I said, start. You know, what I found, God blesses you so much, I'm going to have to bless him more. Church, I think you've got all five. We're down to six, which means I'm going to give. And I'll do my part to see that we pay this preacher. I have no doubt about it. This is the secret to God blessing this place. I don't have any idea what you're paying now. I haven't asked. I don't know, but I'm, I'm going to tell you, when you decide as a church, we're going to support our pastor. We're going to double what we think he ought to get. And when you do that, you're following in the line of the Lord. Church, I can't just leave you like this. All right, let's go through them. Number one, rejoice. Can you do that? Number two, pray. Three, Talk about, just think about Jesus. Good. Four. Five. Christ. Oh. Six. Okay, church. I'm going to ask you. I know you can't speak for the whole church. But you can speak for you personally. And that's what counts. I'm going to ask you. If you will commit to all six of those secrets for a good church, all six, Paul didn't write it for no reason at all. And the last one is as important as any. Will you personally make a stand to do those six things? I'm going to ask that you stand if you're making that commitment. There's some way you need to express it. And I know you want to do it. 
And I'm going to ask you to do that right now. Let me pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, it hasn't been easy. There's been a struggling in many seats in this place, and I understand it. This means we got to trust you with everything and with our church and our pastor. And so, Lord, we make this commitment today. We want to see Kingdom Fellowship be a mighty church reaching lost people all over for you. And so we stand with the principles given in Philippians chapter 4, our principles. We commit it to you, your blessing as you so said. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
all be seated. All right, hey guys. Uh, long time listener, first time speaker. My name is Wing, uh, but most of you guys know me as Bo, and I just want to thank you all today for just fellowshipping with us and coming out this afternoon.